Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. You join us today for our one-off show at the moment in the UK. May happen again down the line, we'll see how successful it is. It is AW Knighthood, we will have the Knighthood tournament to crown a sir and to crown the new number one contender for the AW World Championship. I'm hoping it's a good show, fingers crossed. I do feel that our lack of overness in the UK may hurt, but it's only going to be broadcast in one area, so it shouldn't be too bad. But let me know how you feel about the episode as it progresses, uh, as it's something we may look to do more often, and obviously look to expand to other places across the likes of Mexico, Japan, all these places are all under consideration, pending how this one pans out. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, let's crack on, let's see how this goes. So we are sold out, 25,000 have made it to Watford. And we've got a couple of pre-show matches just before we crack on. We had an abysmal pre-show match that saw Ricky Starks defeat T-Hawk in 11.44 with the Buster Keaton. A 41, my good one here for Ricky Starks. More so for gaining momentum because obviously he's not going to get more overness from this show. We had Chris Statlander defeat Jamie Hayter in 10.04 by pinfall, a 43. A good performance from Jamie, because she'll be more over in the UK than she would be in the States. And we had a abysmal pre-show match that saw Kip Sabian get the victory over Mark Quinn in 9.26 with a springboard dropkick. Obviously, Isaiah Cassidy is now out for nine months. Uh, we've performed surgery to reduce that by two months. So Mark Quinn takes a loss here, a 44, because uh, we had to protect him and make him look strong to give Kip the victory. So we start off the show, and that's a bit iffy, 78, but we'll see how it progresses as we go on. But we start the show with our hype package, and it is the eight competitors in the tournament tonight. So that's Cody, Tommy End, Brody Lee, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, Matt Riddle, Brian Cage, and Ray Phoenix. All them actually did well, which is good because it was unscripted, and just really given their point of where, why they're going to become a sir, and why they're going to become the number one contender for the AEW World Championship. So looking forward to this one. Hopefully it succeeds. Let's crack on straight away with some first round action. So Cody will make his entrance. Just a 73 years not so over in the UK but getting the crowd going effectively with that entrance. And he has a match up against Tommy End and it was decent. Cody picks up the win in 12.07 with the beautiful disaster, progressing to the semi-finals. A 69, you can tell by the huge difference in in-ring performance, not over in the UK. So Cody 66 plays Tommy in 69. But a good one for Cody, two matches away from getting that chance at the AEW World Championship. Also in the first round had a decent reaction from the crowd in terrible wrestling as Brody Lee defeated Chris Jericho and then 10 with a pile driver. A 58 here, both guys didn't click, sort of dropped a few points. Jericho off his game as well, but Brody Lee takes his place into the second round. We also had Kenny Omega defeat Brian Cage in 1341 with a one winged angel. This was a 74 match of the night so far. Kenny 74 played Brian Cage's 65. So Kenny Omega will face Brody Lee in the semi finals. And ending the first round, we get a match that had some good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd as Ray Phoenix defeated Matt Riddle in 953 with a Meteora. So a 77 match of the night so far. That rivalry continues between Ray Phoenix and Cody as they meet in round two. What I find mental is there's not too many matches on this show, but we still somehow, because of the tournament, clear out the full allocation of the show. Now they want to make it like a five hour show, that would have just been too much, but so far so good. As I say, some people far different in ring performances because of their overness in the UK, which is why this is more a test event, but quite cool to have some storyline implications alongside that. We then had an alliance forming, so obviously it was going to be Orange Cassidy, Best Friends and John Moxley versus the Inner Circle. But they've managed to talk nice to Miro, 
which is ironic because at the time of recording he's in a feud with Chuck Taylor and the four people in that matchup will be Cassidy, Beretta, Taylor and Miro versus the inner circle. So that was a 47. We had the TNT Championship on the line and it was a decent reaction from the crowd, subpar wrestling and we had Darby Allen defeat Tyler Bate in 1244 with a coffin drop. This was Darby's first defence of the belt. Could have been a bit better, only a 68 because they didn't click and it made for an awkward bout. So I think that would have smashed the 70s, but you can already see there that's Darby Allen losing pretty much 20 in terms of earning performance. So um, once we get that deal in the UK, hopefully we'll be able to get Abde on the on the right path of all this. Moving along, we had the Fatal 4-Way for the AEW Women's title. It was an abysmal matchup that saw Tony Storm defeat Nikki Storm, Sadie Gibbs and B Priestley in 10.42 when Tony defeated B Priestley with strong zero. The second defence of the AEW Women's title, Nikki was head and shoulders above the rest, Sadie was weak. But 52 is not too bad, it was good to give them an opportunity. Like says, Sadie Gibbs and B Priestley have not really had much in this save. So it's kind of a choice to see the original AEW stars, obviously both now gone from the company, against two guys that, sorry, two ladies that have been brought in in the save. Semi-final time, and we had Cody defeat Ray Phoenix in 13.50 with the beautiful Disaster. This was pretty decent, a 74 is okay, a 62 for Cody and a 77 for Ray Phoenix. Cody benefited from the hot new move and the groundwell support. It just shows Cody's got a long way to go within the UK and low morale and inconsistency but he's one match away from that AEW World Championship shot. And in the final he will face Mr Brody Lee as Brody Lee defeated Kenny Omega in 9.41 with a running big boot. This is due to a distraction from Dark Order member John Silver so they didn't click which cost it from being any better. But a 67 and it sets up Cody versus Brody Lee to become number one contender. Before that we do have a few matches though before the main matchup that fatal or sort of the eight man tag took place. It was about the head subpar wrestling and little heat as the team of Miro, Orange Cassidy and Best Friends got the shock win over the inner circle when Miro submitted Santana. 61 here, even Sammy Guevara down to an in-ring performance of 61, so the UK doesn't know too much of the Spanish god. The reason I had the baby faces win here, well, Santana took out my main guy, so um, yeah, a bit of revenge is uh, a bit of, I don't know, just tell, you know, you've done a horrible job in injuring our star, but uh, just a punishment, that's the word I'm looking for, I don't know why I stumbled on that, but yeah. Not happy with that, so Miro gets the submission on Santana. Uh, an able replacement for John Moxley. Moxley, sh I don't think he'll be back in time for the bank on it. But full gear will be after that, so we might have some sort of mega match. At full gear, still to be determined. So Rhea makes her elaborate entrance in front of her UK fans. As I say, she is wrestling her first match in which feels like forever ever. That was a 61, and the matchup with Shayna Baszler was decent. Syria wins in 1347 with a night light. Cool name for a finisher. 70 overall. Syria with a 71. Shayna with a 63. Shayna Baszler off her game as well. So I think in the U in the US that could maybe maybe pushing this get close to an 80, which for our women's division at the moment is really spectacular. Obviously because of this, Shayna gets absolutely enraged and she tries to beat down Saraya after the matchup. But who comes back to make the save? Kairi Hojo, who of course was injured and is now back from injury. She saves the day, chases off Shayna Baszler and saves Saraya from a serious beat. And of course that matchup was meant to take place in uh, one of our previous pay-per-views. I can't remember which one. Fighter Fest possibly. But yeah, she's back and we will get that Kairi Hojo. Shayna Baszler match at one point. Moving on, we had the AEW World Title match, and good job we didn't make it the main event because despite both guys having good in ring performances, you can see here the injury has absolutely destroyed this match. 
We'll go through it one by one. It was great heat, great wrestling, good heat. Pack defeats Will Ospreay in 24-32 with a 450 splash. So she should hopefully gain a lot of overness within the UK or within the the South anyway. 67 and it is a sternoclavicular separation. So I'm assuming that's somewhere on the shoulder, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, Osprey with 90. Fact, what? I don't even know. But anyway, Osprey with 90, Pack with 77, the champ's getting stale, but uh, yeah, obviously this was just going to be a showcase match and the title was never going to change hands. Is it main event time? It might be. It is! So it was a decent matchup, and we had Brodie Lee defeat Cody in 1901 by pinfall with a pile driver. This was thanks to a distraction from MJF. Brody Lee wins the AW Knighthood. He will become Sir Brody Lee. I mean, it was obvious when I started teasing that with him and Kip Sabian, and it means your number one contender for the belt is Mister or sorry, Sir Brody Lee. And just to confirm, because Tony Khan will unveil it. AW Bank on it. AW Championship Pack versus Brody Lee. So we've got that to look forward to. A seventy segment. So the matches are not particularly over in the UK, that's fine, we know what to work on. After this, we have a three-man beatdown of Cody, which is of course MGF, Wardlow and Ricky Starks, which got a 57, because obviously not so much over in the UK. And while this is happening, a Dark Order ceremony as Brody Lee celebrates in the ring, as he now becomes Sir Brody Lee. The show itself didn't result in any popularity changes, so that's good. We basically pay our wrestlers and we get the 25,000 gate, although I think it would put it lesser, so we might not get as much money as we have usually went for. But I think it was a good idea to test it and trial it, see how we were in the UK, and I think it will be somewhere we probably don't visit until either we get the deal in the UK again, or until this tournament takes place next year. But I don't know, we could have it like WWE had it with um, Rebellion, Insurrection, uh, if there was any others off the top of my head. But those kind of B pay per views or C because they very rarely had anything great happen at them. But we'll leave it there, as I say, just a trial and error. You can let me know what you think and what you think of the programme going forward. Mr. Brody, Sir Brody, I used to call him that, Sir Brody Lane Pack in that AEW World Title match in two weeks. Just before I finish up, I will confirm that Bank on it will have, well, a stipulation match, a ladder match with a contract on it. Uh, but I think I name for it, and I think I'm just going to try and create a match in this. Uh, it's AEW's version of Money in the Bank without it being called Money in the Bank, effectively. But I want to make it quite funky. Toyed with the idea of a ladder match within, effectively, Hell in a Cell, I suppose. Because obviously a cage wouldn't have a roof, so we couldn't do that. But I'm intrigued. Uh, see what I can come up with. If you get any ideas, let me know. But um, yeah, we'll crack on. Back to Dynamite, two weeks of build, and then on for our actual event, which will be broadcast on Pay Per View Network. So thank you for watching. Take it easy, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>